So many people who are watching right now, there's like this lid on their lives. There's something restricting them and blocking them. They, they might be right on the verge of a, of a job promotion or a financial breakthrough or a relationship breakthrough, and something just stops it. And you say that the, the enemy, the devil, Satan, is using three different spirits to just sabotage our lives. And I'm excited about this interview because you're going to expose how these spirits operate. You're going to tell us how they're getting access in the first place. And best of all, you're going to tell us how to defeat them. So let's jump right in. The first one is the hindering spirit, hindering spirit. How does that operate? Well, Bob, the hindering spirit is very subtle. So this is one of those spirits that is not very obvious, like a spirit of lying or a spirit of anger, spirit of greed. So it's not easily detected. So when you're under attack by a hindering spirit, they will come in and they will try to block your progress. They will come in and block your breakthrough. Something will come in to hinder your walk with God, to walk in the fullness of your destiny. But it's so subtle that you will never be able to detect this spirit as well as another spirit. Mm -hmm. And so that's how they operate, very subtle, and they love to work with other spirits to set them off. So you're not on guard watching for them. Mm -hmm. And so they'll hide. They will block you from your progress, from work, uh, progressing in a promotion. They will come in and stop you from progressing in the things of God. If there was a promotion coming, they may use other people even to stop you from progressing. And you won't even realize that the end enemy is actually using another person to hinder you. Mm. So we really need to have uh, spiritual discernment because if they're not detectable, it's like it's only God revealing to us that this thing is going on. So uh, let's talk about another spirit, a second spirit that works hand in hand with the hindering spirit. And that's the spirit of delay. Now we've all dealt with delays, you know, things postponed in our lives. But tell me exactly what you're talking about here. Well, delay works hand in hand with hindering. So the hindering will block and then the setup trap is delay. So delay does not mean denial. However, it will delay you from progressing. And so that spirit will work in tandem. They work hand in hand. They're like a gang. The mm. one gang starts, the next gang member will, will continue in hindering you with delay. You won't be able to progress. And it will cause like a, you're like a, on a highway, you know, and you're driving somewhere and all of a sudden there's an accident. So it delays you to getting to your destination. So they work hand in hand. It's hindering you and it's delaying you from getting to your final destination. Well, Sandra, sometimes there are delays in our lives and it's, and it's God. Mm -hmm. I mean, we may, we may not be ready to move into something or whatnot. How do we know we're dealing with a spirit of delay instead of just a, a normal God thing? Because, Bob, what ends up happening is you start feeling anxious. You start feeling, you know, a, a, a case of depression will come on you. There's, there's times when you don't even want to read the Word of God anymore. You know, your fire is put out. Those things are not of God. If a delay was caused by God, it would give you some sense of peace. In these type of situations, you feel absolutely no peace. You feel anxiety. It will bring on stress. It can even bring on sickness. Mm on you because you, you're not understanding what's happening. When you know something should actually be, it is not. It reminds me of the scripture, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Absolutely. Yeah. And Sandra, this can even be in a, a family for generations, this kind of spirit. Right? Yes, it can. These type of spirits will come down the generational bloodline. So if you've had a family member or family members, you always feel like you're taking three steps forward and suddenly it's 10 steps back. So these things happen suddenly. They happen without purpose. And that can progress down the bloodline. So we have to cancel out generational bloodline spirits that follow the family line. Mm. Now the third one, the spirit of setback. 
You know, we've all dealt with setbacks in our lives when things don't go the way we expected, the way we planned. But uh, why do you say setbacks could be a spirit? Because, Bob, what happens is these spirits, like I said, they work together. So a, a hindering will block, a delay will cause timing, and a setback will take you right back to where you started. So the enemy will always want you to lose hope. Hope in who? Hope in God. So the main purpose of these spirits is to lose your trust in God because something was supposed to happen and suddenly it is not, and it loses you lose your hope in God. So the main purpose of the enemy is to get you to walk away from God. Mm -hmm. Now, you alluded to this earlier, but these spirits can also uh, kind of open the door to more spirits. What, what other things yes. can, can come in? Other access points, we're talking access points. So these spirits can open the doors to other spirits. Other spirits of anger can come in. Frustration can come in. Stress comes in. Sickness can come in. Because you're fighting these things. We see, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, Ephesians 6. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. But we are wrestling with principalities, powers, rulers, and wicked things. So these open door to other ruling spirits that will come in and will abort your destiny. Hmm. Well, Sandra, we need to take a quick break right here. And when we come back, we're going to find out how these spirits are getting access to your life. And then, best of all, how you can defeat them. Come back in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. Bob Duvall here with Sandra Benalia Smith. Now, Sandra, people might be watching and thinking, well, you know, you're talking about this stuff, you know, these hindering spirits and delay and all of that, but, you know, has your life been a breeze? I mean, have you had smooth sailing? Well, no, you've been through it. And I just want to quickly cover some of the things that you've had to overcome. You and your, your three sisters dealt with all kinds of abuse growing up, including sexual and physical and emotional, mental abuse. Then you kind of escape from that into uh, these abusive marriages, uh, abusive husbands, two different marriages. And in the second marriage, you have a couple of, of sons, which was amazing because doctors told you you had been beaten so bad as a child, they didn't think you were going to have any kids. And then your firstborn son gets cancer, deals with that for a year. He dies at the age of eight devastating and your husband leaves three weeks later God leaves for another woman leaves you in a mountain of debt and taking care of a five-year-old then you lose your job <laughs> it's just on and on you deal with anorexia and bulimia for like 35 years before you get delivered sandra how did you overcome all of this <laughs> by the grace and the mercy of god that's how i overcame and, and Bob, what happened to me was, you know, that God, God came in. I just cried out to God. I said, God, I don't know what else to do. Take me instead. You know, I, 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 I wanted to commit suicide after all of that, that, that went on, especially after my son passed away, my ex-husband left. But God in his mercy, when we cry out to God, God steps in and I had to just take him with a little bit cobweb of faith that I had and he grabbed onto me and I had to trust him. And that's how I began to overcome. I began to trust God and then God began to teach me. He said to me, I am going to teach you. I didn't know about sickness. I didn't know about healing. I didn't understand demons. I didn't understand the kingdom of darkness. I didn't understand the kingdom of God for all that that matters, right? It, it, and, and so God stepped in and he began to teach me. And then I also began to, to read. I went and I searched the generals of of God. I, I had to understand what did they do? People died in their lives. How did they raise the dead? How did they heal the sick? How did they cast out devils? What is a devil? I didn't even know I could have demons. I was saved. I had to understand all of this. I had to understand cancer. What is cancer? Cancer is a sickness that's not of God. I had to trust God. And as I trusted God, he began to teach me what I needed to know to now I set 
captives through free through the power of God. Yeah. Not the power of Sandra, power of God that is working in and through me. It makes all the difference. So, Absolutely. All right, let's 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 get back to our topic here because we're talking about the hindering spirit and the yes. spirits of delay and setback. So Sandra, tell me how in the world, I mean, uh, for a believer, a Christian follower of God, how are they getting in? <laughs> yeah, where, where are they getting in access to our lives? They can get in through unforgiveness. Now, mm -hmm. unforgiveness is one of the biggest reasons, Bob, uh, that we find even in healing and deliverance, why people don't get healed and why people cannot get delivered because unforgiveness will abort the plan of God on your life. Jesus said, I cannot mm -hmm. forgive you if you do not forgive. So that's an open door. Right. Another open door is unconfessed sin. Hmm. You know, the Bible talks about how we need to confess our sin to one another. And so unconfessed <laughs> sin. Remember, Jesus said to the man, be healed and go sin no more, lest something worse should come upon you. Mm. So sin will open the door. Also what opens the door is idols, uh, objects in the home that you have that are demonic. For instance, you know, we used to bring back all kinds of things from Mexico, things like that. Idols are open portals for demons to be able to come in and have access. Mm. Another one is not getting into the Word of God, mm. not understanding the will of God, the promises of God. There Therefore, if we don't understand that sickness is not of God, we're going to keep that sickness because we think God is trying to teach us something through a sickness. And those setback spirits and hindering spirits and spirits of delay, they will work themselves until you're sick and dying. They can even cause premature death. Mm. So there's all kinds of open doors, but those are probably one of the top. What about, and, and this is something you mentioned in your teaching, uh, robbing God. Yes. What, what does that mean? <laughs> a lot of people don't like that topic. We could teach another show on that. <laughs> Robbing God with your tithes, with your offering. You see, we have to understand that when we are not obedient to the Word of God and we are walking in disobedience, even robbing God with our tithe can open doors to sin. Disobedience in the Word of God will open the door to sin and will open the door for the demons to be able to have access to you. Mm. Now, you mentioned unconfessed sin and, and just kind of another uh, facet of that is like an unrepentant attitude. Yes. And you talk about the, the children of Israel in the wilderness where they had an unrepentant attitude. and. A trip that should have taken 40 days took 40 years. So talk about a delay. <laughs> That's a crazy delay. way. Um, what about generational curses? Where do they come into play here? The generational curses, there's different types of generational curses. A lot of the curses will come from words from other people. And so when other people are operating, remember we don't fight against flesh and blood. We're operating with demonic entities that are operating in people. So witchcraft is huge and curses. So when we are cursing someone, that can also open a door. The Bible says that a curse cannot land without a cause. If you're operating operating in disobedience and sin, there's a cause for that curse to land. Mm. So we have to understand that. And even the confession of our words, Bob, we need to be very careful what we're confessing. Our words bring life or death and they can bring a blessing or a curse. So we can actually curse ourselves by our confession. Are we speaking with our confession of faith or are we speaking in doubt and unbelief? That's a very good point, because to go back to some of those examples I mentioned at the very beginning about maybe a promotion or mm -hmm. a breakthrough, what if we're saying with our mouth, well, that'll never happen to me, I'll never get that, I, you know, I'll never be able to buy a house, and, you know, everyone else can have a great relationship, but it'll never, well, you're confessing out of your mouth, yeah. uh, you're being the enemy's mouthpiece, really, in that, in that case. So absolutely, we got to watch what we say. So Sandra, we need to take one more quick break. When we come back, we found out how these spirits operate. We found out how they're getting access to your life. Then we're going to find out how to defeat them. Come right back in just a moment.
Do you know that you can get the powerful Receive Your Healing audio CD that Sandra Benalia Smith will talk about in a few moments when you choose receiving it by mail or by digital download and make a donation of any size to It's Supernatural? Just one way your gift helps is we can create and broadcast life-changing programs for our Emmy TV network as we reach out to all of Israel and the Middle East even during these turbulent times, sharing that Jesus is the Messiah for Jewish people and for everyone else too. You won't find Sandra's amazing healing CD offered anywhere else. I wanna share with you my CD, Receive Your Healing, will talk about every area of healing, what the Bible says about healing and how it is the will of the Father to heal you. I will also be talking about ways to receive your healing. I'm also gonna be sharing with you keys to minister healing once you receive your healing and giving you steps to be able to minister to the sick, to the blind, to the lame, so you can use your God-given gift of healing and reach the lost and the broken through the healing power of God. The Spirit of God that is inside of you can heal the sick and set captives free. And sometimes you need to get delivered first from demonic oppression. Just like the woman that was hunched over for so many years when Jesus cast out the spirit of infirmity and she was healed. I am gonna be teaching you about your healing, how to receive it and how to minister it by the power of God and knowing when it's a demon that you will have to deal with. Now take a moment and listen to the CD. I take authority and I bind the spirit of infirmity attacking our bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that this CD will bring light, will bring revelation, that they will know that divine power is within them to heal the sick. If you've been encouraged and blessed by this program, you can get Sandra's exclusive Receive Your Healing CD when you make a donation of any size to It's Supernatural. Just choose the digital download or to receive it by mail. Welcome back to Something More. Now, Sandra, I wanna jump right in because we've been talking about these spirits that the enemy, the devil, is using to sabotage our lives or to try to, and, and he's using a hindering spirit, a spirit of delay, a spirit of setback. So we've talked about how they're getting access, but Sandra, how do we defeat them? You know, we, we, we have discernment, we can see, okay, this is operating here. I need to get rid of these things. What do I do? Well, Bob, the first thing to do is we need to recognize that they're even there. And that's the first point of contact, is to recognize that as a believer, we can be dealing with these things. And these things are not on, they're in. And so we have to pursue deliverance. We, we need to get into the Word of God. We need to confess our sins. We need to repent. Okay, we need to repent. And then the step is we need to renounce the hold of the enemy. And so we need deliverance. We need to go through a deliverance process. And the most important thing after deliverance is to change, is to be restored. And it is to change our way so we don't allow these things to come back again because they will come back hmm. if we let them. So you're talking about deliverance. I mean, for a believer, a believer needs deliverance. Yes, they do. Okay. Yes, they do. <laughs> and you talked about this a little bit before, but getting into the Word, how important is that? Well, the Word of God is so important because if you want to be delivered of these things, you need to know how to refill yourself up. Because the Bible says that if we don't know how to fill ourselves up with the Word of God, seven worse will come. Mm. And they will, and they'll join the one that got let out. So that's really eight. And God forbid one's a legion. Mm. So we need to ensure that we fill ourselves up with the Word of God. The Word of God is medicine to our bones. It brings healing, it brings deliverance, and it keeps us clean. Now you say prayer is yes. important in this, in this uh, process. 
Uh, but there's different kinds of prayer. People pray different ways. What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about we're going to stop begging God for something and we're going to start taking authority and commanding things to happen. God gave us the power and the authority. The Great Commission talks about how we have the authority to cast out out demons and so that's how we pray we're not you know praying is more to the Lord and casting out a demon is you're speaking right to that devil and you're commanding these things to happen you're taking your rightful position and authority in God well give me an example let's say I, I recognize something in my life it's a spirit of delay mm -hmm. and I know it's the enemy how would you pray I would immediately say, Father, I repent for any sins that I have, known or unknown. Now I will renounce the hold of the enemy over my life, and I take authority, and I command the spirit of delay, setback, and, and hindering spirits. I command them to lead me now in the name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. Mm. Much different from... Well, God, if, if it's your will, would you, you know, a very, very different way of praying. It's a, you talk about it being like violent prayer, but violent because we're wrestling against these spirits, not against flesh and blood. So we need to take authority. Um, how about like planning things out? Where does that come into play here? Planning things out is part of your life. You need to plan your life out by trusting God. And so when we plan out, I mean, it's a planning according and aligning to yourself the, to the will of God. We're not planning on, on ourselves. We're planning according to and being in alignment with the will of God. So planning helps us to walk in the fullness of our destiny. Hmm. Now, there's different scripture references, of course, that help us in this process. But tell me how the prayer of Jabez comes into play here. I think a lot of people are familiar with that. But how does that help with this? It helps because we're asking the Lord, you know, Lord, open up the territory, enlarge our tent pegs, open it up. But when you ask God to open something up like that, you better be, you know, be ready for the attacks because that immediately comes. So the prayer of Jabez will also say, keep me free from evil, help me against the evil one. And so God is helping you plan out. You're asking God to open it up, but the attacks will come and now we're going to fight against the evil one as well because if you progress in the things of God the kingdom of darkness will be at you even more mm. now Sandra I feel like there are people who are watching us right now that are identifying with what we're saying with what you're saying yeah. the, the spirits that have been hindering and blocking and delaying and so on um, but we want them to get breakthrough would you take a couple minutes right now and pray for the, that person watching to have breakthrough? Absolutely. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. Today we're going to stand before you, O oh God, and we're going to just confess our sins. So you need to confess right now. Just confess any sin, a known and unknown in the name of Jesus. And we break that power right now. We renounce the spirit of hindrance, the spirit of setback, and the spirit of delay. And we take authority over those spirits right now. And we command them to leave you now in the name of Jesus. I break every spirit of setback that is causing you to not progress in the things of God. I break it right now by the fire of God. And I destroy their maneuvers in in Jesus name I break that spirit of hindrance right now I command it to leave you now in Jesus name the fire of God just go in right now and burn out any residue that is left right now in the name of Jesus and I speak that by divine authority in the name that the power of God goes in and through you and sets you free right now in Jesus name and God, we just give you the praise and thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you might be watching right now, and this is all foreign to you. It's like you're not even a believer in God. Well, okay, take that as step one. Receive Jesus. Repent of your sins. Invite him into your heart. Make him Lord of your life. 
and then you have access to these promises of God, his, his help in, in overcoming the enemy. And if you already know God, he wants you to be free of these setbacks and delays. And we need you as the body of Messiah, we need you to be fulfilling your destiny, your calling. So turn to him today if you don't know him, but also if you know him already, reach out and walk in the fullness of what God has for you. And join us again next time for something more.